I've been on YouTube looking for, you know, going through tier lists. I'm kind of a tier list fan myself. And I noticed there were no good periodic table tier lists. And Fish and I, you know, um, we do science from time to time. We're a connoisseur. You know, it's, it's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing we, we you know, do occasionally. So we decided that we're going to put together a periodic table tier list. We are going to be ranking these elements on... Uh, what are we ranking them on, Fish? How how good they are in a fight, for sure. That's of one course. Of I, I think we also compare their like usefulness in society, but also sometimes we look at how well they can wreck other elements as well. That's true. Well, also, I mean, so we're definitely looking at how useful they are to society, but... You know, I'm kind of interested in how dangerous they are too. So we have to balance those a little bit, you know. So we're gonna be we're gonna be going through some elements. I've made a little list of elements that we're gonna go through. Um, you know, there, there's gonna be some missing, some that you like, and there's gonna be some that you've never heard about, and some that I've probably never really heard about either. But I wrote some notes about them, so we'll talk about them, and we'll put them on the tier list, and yeah, that'll be that. I can guarantee you, every single one of you, that at least. And add, I've touched at least an atom of each of these elements. And that's a fish promise. You've heard that here first. Okay, <laughs> so why don't we start? The first one on the list is, we're going to do this in alphabetical order, by the way. So if you have like an element that you like, you can like move around and you know, find, uh, you know, find the element. That, you know, well, if you're talking about something, you can find one that's like forward alphabetically and just move up a little bit. That's what you want to do, but I recommend watching the entire video because it's not going to be good and you're going to love every second of it. <laughs> okay, so anyway, first up on the list, aluminum or aluminium. So how do we feel about this one? I mean, honestly, here, here are my thoughts. Honestly, I feel like it's a knockoff iron, like a much weaker iron in terms of yeah. structural applications, but perhaps it has yeah. some I mean, defining abilities. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's light. Are we ranking the, the elements on how light they are? I, I guess it could be used to make, like, planes. True. So that's, I mean, that's it, useful. For its weight, it's I guess it's useless. pretty strong. Steel is very yeah. heavy I mean, compared to aluminum. That's true. Um, it, we know for a fact that it always loses in fights against gallium. So that, that's definitely a point off, for sure. That's true. I guess it would have to be ranked lower than gallium in some cases then. Yeah. And it's a mess to refine. Like you 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 want to refine aluminum, you're putting a bunch of carbon into the atmosphere and just making everything smell bad. It's it's just not fun. So I'm going to say C tier for aluminum for me. I I can get behind that. Okay. We're going to move that into C tier. Okay. The next one is probably one that none of you have heard about, and I really don't know much about it either, but why did, they, why did I put this on the list? I don't even know why it's on the list, but it, it made it somehow. Is it named after anything antimony. cool? Uh, ant is antimony named after anything cool? I don't know. Maybe it's like Roman or something. <laughs> That's possible. I think this thing used to be, this, this element used to be popular back in the day. Right now it's just used as like the alloy lead for like car batteries. It's pretty rare and just generally pretty boring. I don't have much to say about it. I mean, I don't think it's completely useless. It has some uses in modern society, and it is it is a metal, so you know that, that gives it a couple points too. It's gonna be a little tougher. So I'm saying D for antimony. I, I have nothing to say about antimony. It can it should be taken Thanks, off fish. the periodic table, honestly. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe a bit rough, but. All right, now this next one is argon. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Some of you noble gas simps are gonna be mad about this. You're gonna be like, oh, but it's so cool. It doesn't react with anything. It has a full shell of balance electrons. I don't care, it's boring. I mean, what do you, what do, you do with argon? You make lasers with it, it acts as a buffer. Who cares? It, it, it doesn't do anything. It, it just sits in the corner at the party. It doesn't do anything, it's boring. Oh, fuck, that's what I do too. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I, I'll, I'll give it one F defining tier. feature before we assign it to F tier. I think it's the lightest noble gas that can actually bond with fluorine in some instances. So maybe that's something cool about it. 
so it's, it's it's good defensively. It it knocked out one of the one of the biggest offensive hitters. Yeah, is what you're saying. So I say we still put in F, but F for Florian. Yeah, because I'm, yeah, I'm just saying like. Do we look like the guys who are going to sit in a house in Warzone and not shoot people when the 12-year-olds are yelling at us? And I'm still upset about that, actually. No, we we will show their position on the map and let them come for us. We, I guess in that case, we would be like some sort of Series 1 element, like uh, Sodium. Because we get Excellent. wrecked by Florian. <laughs> okay, Argon, I don't care. I mean, I know, I know. Lasers, I don't, I don't care. It's going in F tier. I bet it's not even a visible light laser. I couldn't say. Me neither. <laughs> okay. Next up, arsenic. Now this one, very toxic. Um, you know, it has a couple medical uses as well. Uh, it's also put into chicken feed to make the chickens super swole. I don't know how that works, but... Maybe it's like a what yes. kills you makes you stronger sort of deal. <laughs> or maybe it's more <laughs> enzymatic, like... Maybe it's more biology, yeah, I... biology oriented. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm it's, it's probably more on the biological side. I am not a biologist, but uh, I, did, I did some research and it does make chickens swole. Um, I would not recommend taking it for yourself to try to get swole, but um, yeah, definitely don't do that. This is don't, do not this is do not take the arsenic. Um. It has a couple of manufacturing uses. It can be used in in glass manufacturing and stuff like that. Uh, it is pretty rare, and you know we we do we do appreciate you know it it being dangerous, but at the same time, it actually does have real impacts on people. It gets into drinking water, and to me, that's not a good thing. We don't we don't like that. So I'm saying C tier for arsenic. I agree, and honestly, it should be in C tier because it can be defeated by the simple water purifier. So. That's true, yeah. <laughs> one last thing I have to say about arsenic is on the microbial use, it was actually used in one of the first uh, anti-syphilis drugs. So like one of the first modern uh, micro... Oh, really? Yeah, antimicrobial agents. You know what? You know what? Oh! Here. I'm moving it up. I'm moving it up. That's, that's cool. That's, that's, a cool. that's a cool thing. I like it. It started modern know. medicine, maybe. Questionable. Yeah. I'm not a doctor, but <laughs> don't quote me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, up next we have boron. Um, you know, it, it makes boron fibers, which are pretty useful. Uh, you know, they're really strong. It's used for Pyrex as well. Um, it's a dopant for semiconductors. Borax, which I put everywhere because I don't, I don't like bugs getting in the house, so I just put a borax everywhere. Which is also uh, a laundry and, agent. Yeah, it could be used for as a laundry detergent as well. It's just really versatile. Just honestly, a, a great element. Um, you know, I would say the only downside to boron is that, you know, it's, it's a little hard to acquire sometimes. I mean, not so much that, you know, there, there's a shortage of it, but it's it's somewhat rare. So. Honestly, I this. wish there were more boron because Pyrex bowls are super cool. Um, at least mm -hmm. boron based Pyrex. I mean, they're super heat resistant, so you could feasibly put really hot things in a boron bowl and it wouldn't have like as good as a temperature. Uh, yeah. Stress cracking. Okay, so, so I say B tier. B tier. B tier like for really, amazing really solid. Glasses, yes. Yeah, I mean, really solid. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not super standout, but it's definitely above average. Solid B tier. Okay, guys. Uh, you, you know what's coming up next. You, you know it's going to be at the top. Yep. I mean, do we even have to say it? Californium. Carbon. Oh. <laughs> carbon. It, yeah, it's, it's carbon. <laughs> I mean, we, well, let's talk about it. I mean, you know, it's a building block for life. It, it's so versatile, it can bind to itself, it can bind to basically everything. It can make all sorts of crazy geometries and chemicals. You got diamonds, you got nanotubes, you got graphene. Uh, it can be used for radioactive dating. It's really versatile, just all around amazing. Uh, you know, it, it's pretty abundant as well. Uh, the only downside I can think of carbon is that it's kind of messing up our climate a little bit. But we, we can also place the blame on oxygen a little bit later on so maybe we can we can still give it a pretty high tier yeah well i mean to me it's a no-brainer s tier absolutely okay okay so next we have chlorine now this one this chlorine likes to party <laughs> i'm gonna tell you that right now 
Chlorine, super reactive, really dangerous. Um, but it, it, you know, it works as a disinfectant as well. So it does have applications in real life because it kills everything. You don't mess, don't mess with chlorine. Uh, you can use it to make hydrochloric acid. It's pretty abundant. Um, the only, to me, you know, the only thing with chlorine is, you know, it gets up in the upper atmosphere and it creates a couple molecules that can mess with the ozone. You know, that, nobody talks about the ozone anymore. That was a big thing in the nineties. Ozone was disappearing. Um, but, you know, I, I think we're doing okay on that front right now, but we still got to stay vigilant. So, you know, be careful with your CFCs. Is that right? Are they CFCs? I think CFCs, I think so. yeah. I mean, yeah. the thing is, so don't, don't yeah, look... the CFCs break apart, chlorine attack. Chlorine just stays in the atmosphere a long time, and it really can't just yeah. get, get out. So, yeah. yeah, so we don't like that. We also like the other thing about chlorine is it's. It likes to party a lot, but it's just really extroverted. It can't, it can't stand on its own. It's always got to be, you know, up someone's ass. So, <laughs> you know, chlorine, I think, can get a little annoying at times, A little times salty, too. So for that, say. Yeah, <laughs> a little <laughs> salty. Uh, so for that, for that purpose, I would say B tier. That, that's, that's a fair judgment. <clears throat> I mean, I guess chlorine is also implicated in war crimes, right? To a degree. That's true. Yeah. That should we knock it down? I think we knock it down to we C just... for war crimes for violating the Geneva Conventions. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it in B tier. But we'll come okay. back to it in the next war council. Yeah, we we'll we'll, we'll address this. <laughs> okay, next we got copper. Now, everybody thinks copper, they think electronics, right? But copper's been a part of our civilization for a long time. It's one of the only metals that you can kind of find just usable on its own you can just take it right out of the ground and you can just use it as it is you don't have to refine it or do anything special um so i think that makes it really useful as well um you know corrosion resistant um it's antimicrobial it's just all around just a great element um i mean adding on to that when it does corrode as well it makes a beautiful patina as we can see on the statue of liberty so it like makes a nice cool color even if it does corrode a little bit yeah yeah, that's true. So I would say, I mean, I think it's great. You know, it's useful for electronics. It was used to make weapons and armor and, you know, other things, you know, back thousands of years ago. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It, and it loves yeah. to bond with other, or it loves to alloy with other elements as well. So it, it's, yeah. a, it's a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice guy. You know, it, and it, it's, it's strong. You know, it's like it's a reliable, good friend. Um, I would say, honestly, like, if chlorine were an anime character, I would say Body Improvement Club. For, for copper? Yeah. Copper, yeah. I meant copper, guys. I said chlorine, but I meant copper. Yeah. So overall, I think, I think great. Uh, the only issue is it's not, it's not super strong on its own. Um, you know, it does like to be with its butts. Exactly. It, it needs a little help, but once it gets the help, I think it can be pretty, pretty good. Okay. I'm going to say A tier. Okay, next we have fluorine. Oh Again, super toxic. It just, it's all up in everyone's business, always starting fights. Uh, you know, it's, it, it'll mess up anything except the noble gases. They just kind of stay on there, they're boring. You know? If you don't mingle, of course, you're not going to get in any trouble, right? Um, it's, it's pretty abundant, too, so it's, it's all over the place. Um, yeah, I mean, I think just on that alone, we, it, you know, it deserves a pretty decent ranking but it, it again it's one of those ones you know it can't stand on its own so it's always up in your up in your shit uh and it can cause you know greenhouse gases as well so it's, you know it's something that you know we want to be careful about as well absolutely and it has some benefits as well since it can't it likes to stay by itself or stay with the elements it's bonded to it's used in teflon which is used in like teflon pans so that those non-stick pans fluorine's the person you should thank and refrigerants. Oh. So a lot of refriger refrigerants use fluorine to actually keep you cool in the summer. So, I mean, okay. you definitely have to so definitely, keep fluorine yeah. in mind. Okay, I'm going to say solid beats here then. You know, not, not world changing, but definitely very useful. Absolutely. I mean, that's fair. Okay. You know, that, that nonstick coating in your pan, it comes off. It, it's not eight. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no. Okay, guys, yeah, this one. Oof. This one's just, I mean, it's, it, it's francium. It's, it's radioactive. It is reactive. It, it, will, it will mess anything up. 
Uh, it, it's always picking fights. It's ready to blow it at a moment. It's probably got 30 dead cats in its basement. Uh, you know, it's I, just living for the moment, I think. But yeah, it's living, it's living for the moment. Um, but not necessarily like, you know, it's, just, it's not necessarily good for society, though. Yeah, it's not, it's not great for society, but it does stand on its own just for being so badass. And for that, I say B tier. Absolutely. B tier is filling up. We're going to we're gonna put things in other tiers. Well, yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, we're, we're going to get to some good ones, I think. Yeah, they're, they're so, they're, don't worry. We're, we're not even halfway through yet, guys. There's more to come. Okay, next on the list, Gallium. Oh, Gallium. Now, Gallium's probably one of my favorite elements purely because it absolutely wrecks aluminum. It com completely reduces <laughs> the structural integrity of aluminum. Incredible. We, we like that a lot. It's, it's also used in, in semiconductors, and it's a really cool metal because it's, it's solid at room temperature, but it melts very easily. So, uh, you know, at a temperature, basically... You know, in your hand, it'll melt in your hand. So that's really cool as well. Um, you know, it's the only issue with it is it, it doesn't really form ores. So it's only, uh, you know, available in trace amounts and it's not that useful biologically. But, um, you know, I think it is important to society and it does, you know, mess up aluminum at, at the very least. So that counts for something. That's true. You really got to worry about gallium when you're getting on a plane, I suppose. So, yeah. So. Well, we're just we're we're stacking B tier, I guess. We're putting in B tier. It has to be B. It has to be B tier because it can't be C tier, <clears throat> right? It has to be better That's than true. aluminum. Yep. Okay. B tier. Okay. Here's here's one. Um, gold. So kind of similar to copper, not quite as conductive, but it is more resistant to corrosion. Um, it shrugs off acids like they're nothing. You know, they try to get in there and it's just it's not. Ain't ain't shit. Um, you know, it's used as money back in the day, so. Yeah, you, you, you can... Um, I mean, it has economic can... usefulness, I suppose. So it's it maybe not yeah. not useful scientifically to, to a degree as other elements, but it does... Humans do like it. Yeah. Um, you know, it is, it is pretty rare. There's not a lot of it. Uh, and, you know, production does cause a good amount of pollution. But I would say, uh, you know, it's resistant to corrosion, but it's able to do things as ductile. Um, you know, it alloys pretty well as well, um, and use, useful for electronics. I will say, and we we like it. It's pretty. I will say there is a combination <laughs> of acids that can take down gold, and it's called aqua really? regia, and it's sulfuric and nitric acid. So it's not perfect. Don't mess with that. Yeah, I mean, it, it requires like the toughest acid, though. Absolutely, it requires a tag team of acids, actually. So. Yeah, a tag team of acids. So, I mean, for that, I, I'm going to say, you know, we don't rank defense super high, but it does have good defense and it has other good properties as well. So I'm going to put it in A tier. What do you think, Fish? I, I think that's fair. If it could resist Aqua Regia, maybe we'd make it S tier, but, you know. Yeah. It's not perfect. Yep. Okay, now we got Hafnium. Um, you know, this one, I, I don't know much about it. Uh, again, I, why did I put this on the list? I was just trying to fill it out. Um, it has some has some uses in electronics manufacturing, uh, but it's pretty rare. Just honestly, not that exciting. And for me, I think I think D tier. Yeah, I mean, we love electronics, so I guess it can't be F tier, right? No, I, only noble gases are going F. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, so next up on the list, we have helium. Now, helium, you know, it's always trying to run away from the Earth. Just just floats away. You know, it's hard, it's hard, to, hard to find, hard to keep. He's a light guy. I mean, he's hard to find. Yeah, it's, it's, it's light. Uh, it doesn't really do anything. Honestly, pretty boring. Uh, I can make your voice sound funny, so I guess that counts for something. And, and put it in D tier because it makes your voice sound funny. Well... Helium-3 can turn into a Bose-Einstein condensate at low temperatures, so that's something cool, at least. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. Is it enough to put it into C-tier? I think it definitely makes it better than argon. It has some scientific use, right? Argon is F-tier, though. Oh, sorry, yeah. I, I, I think it's better than F-tier. I think it's definitely D-tier. All right, that's, what, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Okay, so D-tier. Okay, put it, in, put it in D there. Okay, next up, we have hydrogen. 
Now, hydrogen's, you know, pretty cool. It's the only charge neutral element that is, and you're able to analytically solve with the Schrodinger equation. Everything else is, you know, a multi-body problem, so you can't be solved analytically. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, everything is literally made of hydrogen. You know, it was the first element, all, you know, the stars, you know, they, they fuse it into helium, which then fuses into other things. Uh, it, everything, everything's made from hydrogen and it burns. It's in, you know, it's in water, it powers the sun. It's the most abundant element, so it's everywhere. Uh, I, I think it's great. Hydrogen is top tier for me. Absolutely. And some more radioactive forms of hydrogen can like make your wa your watch glow green. So that's pretty cool. That is cool. Okay, for this one, to me, it's a no-brainer. That's tier. But also, remember the Hindenburg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't, don't make blimps out of hydrogen. Yeah. It, it does like to burn, as... as... James yeah, <laughs> really likes to burn. Okay. Um, next, we have iron. Now, you know, this one, this is this is an important, you know, element for life. You know, it's it's used for respiration. Um, it's, it's a tough, you know, it makes tough, you know, materials as well. You know, steel, even iron on its own is pretty tough. Um, you know, it's it's magnetic. It's uh, it's really solid wingman for, for carbon, uh, you know. It... Also, it's a star killer. So when supernovas they start fusing and making iron, that's when they explode. So I think that's pretty cool too. Absolutely. Is is iron yeah. the heaviest element you can get before like when fusing before it stops making excess energy? Like I think iron's like the um, top, like the most dense like. Uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, there's, I think there's pathways to make heavier elements in small amounts in stars, but I think iron is pretty sure it's one of the only ones that, you know, can be made in, in some sort of, you know, large amount before exploding. It, it, if a star starts making iron, though, it will eventually explode. Well, at least it builds our buildings, so those, those, yeah. those sacrifices by those stars won't go to waste. Thank you, stars. Thank you, stars. So that's why uh, it's S tier for stars. It is S tier. Yeah, S tier for stars. Okay, next on the list, Krypton. It can make lasers. <laughs> Has a cool name, and it doesn't do anything. F tier. Yeah, if it maybe if it had like the same powers as like you know literature, like Superman. I guess Superman isn't necessarily literature, but like media. Maybe it'd be. Cool I mean, it's, it's literature. You know. It, no, maybe it's not, you know, maybe it's not literary fiction, but <laughs> yeah, it's something, you know. We we don't we don't discriminate. We watch, we watch a bunch of anime, <laughs> so we can't, can't be talking any shit. Okay, up next we got lead. Um, you know, it's it's useful. It has a lot of useful industrial applications. Um, you know, it protects against radiation. It's relatively easy to mine. Uh, it is dense, so it's not easy to move around. And pretty good use in bullets, right? Since it's so yeah, it's it's useful useful for weapons. So that you know that no, that's interesting. Um, it's it's pretty pretty inert overall. So slightly boring in that sense. Um, definitely toxic as well. Uh, to me, I'm thinking thinking B tier. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> any element that caught that might have caused the fall of Rome, I'll accept as being B tier, because okay. Romans did use cups made out of lead, which we all yeah. know. Which can actually cause uh, numerous mental effects. Yep, and not good ones. So, yeah, don't don't eat don't eat paint chips, kids. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next up, we got lithium. Now, lithium. I mean, you know, it, it's interesting. It's it's pretty reactive. Um, it has some uses in electronics and you know batteries, obviously, and stuff like that, and you know some other manufacturing. And Elon Musk um, loves them. It right? is loves old lithium. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Elon Musk loves lithium. Uh, it's it's not super stable. Um, its nucleus has pretty low binding energy, so that makes it pretty rare as well. Um, it doesn't do a ton for me. Um, I think it's okay. You know, I, I think it's I think it's better than hafnium. You know, but uh, I'm gonna say C tier, only barely. Yeah. If, if if lithium batteries are slightly less explosive, maybe it could be B tier one day. But until that yeah. day, C tier. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, these these could change. Maybe we find other uses for these elements. Maybe maybe we'll do another one of these. <laughs> a revision when they when they revise the periodic yeah. table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Coming up next, we have magnesium. This one has you know some decent mechanical and electrical properties. Nothing crazy. Um, you know, make sure you get plenty of magnesium in your diet as well. It's important. Um, you know, for maintaining your metabolism, it helps you sleep. So, but I mean, it's not, it's not that exciting. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just, there's not much there. That's fair. I don't know. What do you think, Fish? I think they use magnesium in like very lightweight, correct me if I'm wrong, but they use them in very lightweight applications so that like you can make like a magnesium, like, uh, like wheel hub essentially. So you can have super light tires versus like steel tire rims. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I think that's true. Yeah. I also think they use it, um... For like laptops as well, for like the higher end ones, like the the case can be made out of magnesium. I mean, it does have uses. Um, it's just it's just not that interesting to me. It's very similar to aluminum, and for that reason, I think it should just go in C tier. I I can accept that. Yeah. Okay. Next we got manganese, which really just serves to confuse people. They think it's magnesium. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, it, you can you can alloy it with steel or aluminum. It's it's really not that interesting uh d tier yeah i'm pretty sure it's like a trace like... element for in your diet too so i mean yeah you just don't even need it, it that much yeah i mean it's like it's you know it exists it's, it's not offending anyone um but it's not it's not impressing anyone either, especially not us okay now <clears throat> this one might be a little controversial uh it's mercury now i think it's super cool it's liquid metal um you know, I was using thermometers, manufacturing, and beyond that, super toxic, but also really sneaky in its toxicity. Because um, you know, mercury in its elemental form, you know, you don't you don't want to be around it so much, but it's not super dangerous as far as I understand. Is that right? That's correct. I mean, you see people rolling around mercury in their hands. I think my dad did it as yeah. well too when back in his uh, yeah. chemistry days. But you let that in your body, and that will kill you very quickly. <laughs> uh, you know, if, it's, if it is soluble in, um, I guess, water soluble is, is the issue here? Well, I guess it's when it, like, I guess it when, when it makes, like, carbon compounds, like mer mercury carbon okay. compounds, it becomes very toxic. So keep it away from carbon is the, <laughs> is the point. And which, as you know, way, is the most uh, what really abundant element out there. Old carbon. Yeah. Yeah, not not great. Um, it's super toxic, super cool liquid metal. You know, it's like science fiction stuff. Um, it does mess up the the food chain a little bit. It, it bioaccumulates, so that's not great. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, and you know, I know some of you are not gonna agree with me, but to me, mercury is one of the coolest elements. S tier. Absolutely. A, a metal that's liquid at room temperature, a super dense liquid. That's crazy. Yeah, I think I, I think it's just so it's just super cool. You could stand um, in a pool of mercury. Could you? Is that true? I think Cody's lab did a video on that. So maybe that's something we could do if we got enough enough subscribers. I I, I don't want to see <laughs> a pool of mercury. Okay. Uh, next up, we got neon. Uh, another noble gas. It's used for lasers, but I do think neon lights are pretty cool. So it's it's contributed to 80s culture uh, and also um, cyberpunk literature, I guess, to some degree. But other than that, it's pretty boring. We could arguably uh, say neon lights indirectly improves how ray tracing looks. If we go really indirectly. Like, if you were in a video I, game and you saw neon lights, they'd look really cool. But I guess you don't really need neon to do that. Yeah. I mean, I do think neon lights are cool, but... I, I'm gonna say D tier. Like it's not, it's not super exciting. Um, you know, a lot, you know, D F tier. That's where the noble gases go in my book. Yeah. Any objections? I unless someone makes like a mega laser out of neon, it's staying D tier. Yeah. Well, here's here's the thing about you know the the whole laser thing as well. Like everybody's like, oh, you can make you know super lasers out of these things. You know, they have great offense. I have not seen a laser that could hurt someone like seriously that, you know, is 
You, you can't wield that. You, you know, you, these powerful lasers are the size of a basketball court. They're huge. Yeah, and, and all the cool lasers that are handheld are like semiconductor ones anyways. So, it, I mean, it gives yeah. even more points to the semiconductors above. Yep, exactly. Okay, so next up we got nitrogen. Now, nitrogen, I think... You know, nitrogen's not afraid to party, you know, if the time is right. Um, but it's pretty chill overall. You know, it, it it knows when to sit back, but it also knows when to, you know, when to get in there. Um, it's a nice filler you know, in the it, atmosphere. Just yeah, it, you know, it's a nerd enough. Yeah, it's a nerd enough to not cause problems, but it also can form some really important organic compounds. You know, you need it in the soil for plants. Uh, it, it's very important for life and it's very abundant. So, you know, I think, I think nitrogen is great. I... To me, it's A tier. Yeah, especially when it bonds with its one of its best friends, hydrogen, makes a nice fertilizer. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, we'll put that in A tier. All right, next we got oxygen, which is kind of the rambunctious sibling of carbon <laughs> and nitrogen. Um, you know, it definitely likes to to party a little bit more. Um, it, you know, it hangs out in a lot of organic compounds, and it is important, obviously, essential for aerobic. Uh, respiration it's really abundant um, but it definitely is a little too reactive um, you know so for that you know I, I would say to me a tier probably yeah i mean while it is useful and necessary for aerobic respiration it also like destroys your dna in the process so you know it has some... yeah peroxides are pretty <laughs> dangerous yeah that's true i mean you do get cool stuff from from oxygen right you get you get fire um you know and it, it will mess up almost anything uh i mean if it's in the atmosphere you know if, it, if it's on exposed to it long enough so i mean that's interesting i guess but yeah i would say i would say a tier okay next we have platinum here's my opinion i think platinum is super overrated it's it's really only useful as like a catalyst uh, it doesn't have great electrical properties it really doesn't do much i'm really not that impressed by it I mean, it definitely has some utilities above, like, noble gases. It de it helps purify, like, the exhaust in your car. Uh, catalytic converters have trace amounts of platinum. Uh, yeah. But other than that, I mean, it's, it's, it's not as cool as, say, gold or carbon, so. Yeah. I feel like it's often lumped in with gold, but I think it just, I think it kind of sucks. You don't see anyone wearing a platinum ring, right? You only <laughs> see gold rings out there. That's true. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna say, you know, I don't think it, I don't think it's completely useless. I do think it's kind of cool. Uh, you know, it has it has a nice a nice shine to it. I'm gonna say C tier. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Up next, we got we got we got a pretty cool one. I like this one a lot. Plutonium. Now, if you just have some plutonium chilling in the atmosphere, that thing's gonna go on fire just on its own. It's gonna be burning in your hands. Tell me that's not cool. I think there was a super weapon that was designed where it was just a rocket that like jetted air past some plutonium, and the plutonium was the fuel. It just superheats the air, and it can keep flying for weeks. Like that is crazy. That, that is terrifying. Um, it, you know, <laughs> you, you don't want too much plutonium in one place, though. <laughs> <laughs> they will like to party. A little too much, <laughs> and it's gonna go super critical and kill everyone. So yeah, don't don't do that. It's not a good idea. Um, really rare though, so you know that, that's a, that's a point against it. I think a little bit. It also killed um, you know quite, quite a few scientists <laughs> because they, they thought it would be a good idea to balance two half spheres of plutonium uh, on top of each other, separating them only with a screwdriver. Uh, and that piece of plutonium later became known as the Demon Core because it killed like three people. I mean, the, the, it could have been more or less. Don't quote me. Honestly, I think the scientists are slightly at fault there for bringing two pieces of plutonium to almost supercritical mass. But you know, <laughs> it's science. You got to sometimes. Yeah, plutonium's S tier. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next, we got radon. Um, you know, I would say above argon and krypton just because you know it's it's a little radioactive and a little bit more reactive than the other two so it's it's a little interesting in that sense i guess it helps us sustain um, the economy does... right you have to buy a radon test yeah <laughs> uh it, it does it yeah it, it, you know you have to be careful because that stuff um 
you know, it can collect in your basement and it, it can kill you. It can give you, um, you know, cancer. It's, it's not, it's not fun. So, you know, for that, I would say, you know, it's a little bit more interesting than the other noble gases, but I'm going to say, you know, D tier. Yeah. I feel like if it causes a significant amount of lung cancer, it can't be anything above D. Yeah. Okay. Next, we got scandium. Um, why, why, <laughs> why do I keep adding all these things that are, like, aluminum additives? I mean, yeah. I mean, it just shows, here. I guess, you need a lot of support characters. And if you're a support character, oftentimes you're D tier. <laughs> that, that's true. Okay, so... Next, we have silicon. This one, really abundant, really useful in semiconductors. I mean, this is the entire basis of, you know, technology, basically from, you know, the 1960s forward. Um, you know, it has, has some pretty interesting chemistry as well. Uh, I, I think silicon is great. Um, you know, it, it's strange because it's really abundant, but life doesn't make a lot of use of it. So that's, you know... Why is that the case? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I like it. I'm into it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it has a similar like electronic configuration <laughs> as carbon as well. So you'd think that peop, um, organisms would use silicon, but maybe in a, yeah. a, a few more trillion years, there will be silicon-based life forms. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it could just be that carbon is more abundant, so you know they wind up you know being made of carbon instead. But either way, I think it's I think it's pretty cool, and I'm gonna say A tier. I mean, we, we can only make this video because it's silicon. Okay. Next, we have silver. Now, silver's okay. You know, it um, has really good elect electrical properties, better than even, you know, gold or copper. Um, antimicro you know, antimicrobial, um, useful for catalysis as well. Uh, but it tarnishes pretty easily, so, you know, it, it's okay. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not as pretty as gold either. Um, C tier? C tier. Okay. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't throw away your silver kitchen utensils, but, you know, maybe it's not the most exciting. <clears throat> okay. Now we got sodium. It tastes great when it's combined with chlorine. Um, but it's really reactive, but pretty abundant, and it's important for life, uh, you know, because we make a lot of use of sodium, sodium ions. Uh, it can't, again, like the other... More reactive elements it can't stand on its own so it's always going to be you know bound with something or in solution or something like that but you no know, that, that's that's not a knock on it yeah you know, i mean it's doing its thing that being said physically a bar of sodium is like pretty soft as well i think you could like slice it with like a table knife or butter knife not that you would really? you'd probably be exposing it to like water in the atmosphere do that under yeah, it, mineral oil yeah just just don't don't mess with yeah, I, sodium if, if you have if someone offers you a bar of sodium, number one, dry your hands. Number two, don't take Insane. the bar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say B tier though. I think I think it's I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, you know, it's essential for life, so I think solid B tier. Okay. Next we have sulfur. It smells bad. Yeah, I mean um, that that's a big reason why paper plants are. Paper plants stink. Paper mills stink because they, they're getting rid of the sulfur in the wood. So yeah, sticky. it's it's useful. Um, it, it helps your skin a little bit. Um, when I was younger, I actually had, uh, I had I had a little bit of acne, and they gave me a sulfur um, like lotion to put on my skin. It cleared it up pretty well. I got not a beautiful skin, guys. Um, it can make sulfuric acid. I was uh, TAing a organic chemistry lab once and. One of the students had spilled sulfuric acid on my boot and it burned right through it. I didn't notice right away, but then I saw a hole in my boot. So yeah, don't don't mess with sulfur. Um, really, just smells bad. It's like the smelly guy who's kind of cool, but you don't want to hang out with him because he's smelly. So I would say C tier because of that. Yeah, definitely useful though. Can can take yeah. down gold with nitrogen. Yeah, definitely definitely useful. Just you know, do, do you want to hang out with it? I don't know. Uh, next on our list, we have titanium. Now, titanium has great mechanical properties. It's light, good corrosion resistance. It's you know essential for making planes, space, spacecraft, uh, missiles, buildings, uh, and 
it, it, it doesn't mind taking out your body, and your body doesn't mind it either. You know, you need a, you need to to fix some some bone that's been broken. You stick a titanium rod in there, and most of the time you're gonna be fine. You know, your body's not gonna reject it. So I think I think that counts for a lot. You know, yeah. really important for medicine, and just just really useful in general. Just a really good metal. Basically, like titanium to me is the metal of metals. Yeah, it it seems like it seems like steel, but if it was more futuristic. Yeah, like it's just, it's just the paragon of metals, and for that reason, I would say A tier. A tier, absolutely. Yeah, because if you can say you have a rod in you that's made out of the same thing as an SR seventy one, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Okay, <laughs> next we got thulium. <laughs> it's a cool name. Like Thule, it's got a, right? It's got a cool name, uh-huh. and its atomic number is sixty-nine. Boom, boom. It's used for lasers and really not much else. It's rare and boring. F tier. All right, next we got tungsten. Um, it can take crazy amounts of heat. It has really good hardness. You know, it can be used to alloy with steel. Uh, makes really you know really enhances the mechanical properties of of iron that way. Um, it's it makes a really good projectile. Uh, you know great penet- penet- great penetration. I can do words. Don't worry. Um, but it does need to be refined before it's useful though. So you can't just pull it out of the ground. I think it's I think it's solid. You know not not a huge standout, but it's it's good. It's a good element. Yeah. I mean. Thanks, Ish. Yeah. I, I, I'm ready for the next element. I, I've, I've just been prepping for this entire video for this next element. Okay, Tungsten's going to the B tier. Okay. <laughs> All right, next, uranium. Fish, I guess you're excited about this one, so why don't you tell us about uranium? Absolutely, it's, it's atomic number 92. It is, one of the bo- it is one of the most famous radioactive elements out there. I mean, when you think of at- atomic bombs, or nuclear bombs, sorry, you think of uranium. Um, uranium actually has like two forms, one that was super radioactive and one which isn't radioactive. And the non-radioactive ones often used for is called depleted uranium and is used in cool bullets. So depleted, depleted uranium bullets are often used because they're really dense. They can go through armor really well. Honestly, a, a pretty solid element, I'd say. Do you have anything to add, James? No, I, I think, you know, I think that's, it's, uranium's great, you know, it's iconic, um, you know, the only thing I would say, I don't think it's it's quite as cool as plutonium, just because it doesn't burn in the atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, I think so, most sources of plutonium are derived from uranium, though, so, like, when you, when, I think when you put uranium in a reactor, you generate some plutonium, and that's where they get plutonium from, so it's like a gotcha. bunch of reactors, I think you can make some plutonium. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, I mean, I, I think A tier for uranium. I think it's great. You know, it's it's really important for energy generation as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, we we use a lot of nuclear power. Um, you know, I, I just don't think it's quite as cool as plutonium. So I think it's just one tier below. Okay, I can accept that. Okay. All right, next we have Xenon. Um, you know, this one, as far as noble gases go, I think it's actually one of the better ones. It can be used for anesthesia. Uh, you know, it has some lab applications like, you know, NMR and a little bit of biological activity. Um, but it, overall, it's pretty rare and generally boring. I was originally thinking, you know, we put it in D tier, but I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking maybe we bump it up a little bit. Maybe C tier. You know, the fact that it is like a heavier noble gas, I suppose. I, I suppose it could even react with some stuff since it's like less likely to hold on to its electrons. So maybe it's a yeah, little, it is, it is a little, little bit. more fun. Yeah, it, I think it's a little bit more fun. I'm going to say C tier for this one. You know, it, it doesn't wow me. You know, it's not, it's not amazing. It, you know, it's, it's okay. You know, it's not, it's not even boron, but it, it's something. That's true. And we have to make our graph, like, more symmetric, too, so. That's true. Okay. Last, we have zinc. Um, you know, it, it, it helps you get over colds. That's cool. Uh, you know, it's it's a relatively useful alloy. I think it's a good um, friend as well. It helps protect um, metals like steel, iron. Yeah, good yeah, coating. stops them from corroding. Yep. Um, you know, one thing I would recommend is, you know, be careful with your zinc intake because it, it does compete with other 
metals in your body, so like copper. So having too much zinc can lead to copper deficiency. So be careful with that. Uh, but overall, I think it's I think it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean it doesn't it doesn't wow me a ton, but I'm gonna say maybe maybe C tier for it. Yeah. Okay, so we just finished, and this is our periodic table tier list. Um, it definitely seems like I, I think I think we simp for the elements a little bit because it definitely does seem like it's more balanced toward the top. Yeah, for sure. I mean, elements. Yeah. We are comprised of elements. I suppose we would be more biased toward things that's that true. make yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Uh, I guess, like you know, I. The F tier are ones that either we don't know a lot about or that we can't I'm just hating bond on. with physically or yeah. emotionally. Yeah. You know, or, you know, um, yeah, like, you know, noble gases. There are a lot of other elements here that, you know, a lot of them probably would have wound up in F tier. Uh, so, you know, in, in reality, probably the majority of the periodic table would be in F tier because there's a ton of elements with really high atomic numbers that just disappear as soon as you make them. So, I mean, yeah, you, you really can't see something you can't see, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, th th this is, I guess, you know, it, it looks like this because we, 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 this is a somewhat curated list. I mean, why did I put hafnium on it or scandium? I couldn't tell you. They need to be put uh, down I, put, pick, I think. They've been going around yeah. far too long without being put on a tier list. And we need yep, to. Yep, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, in Thulium, it's, it's, Oh, number 69 that's the only reason i put it on there that would be funny it wasn't even that funny but you know it's it's there now it's on the tier <laughs> list it's official this is the official tier list for all uh, elements, yeah or for most the good elements <laughs> for, no, for every single <laughs> element we we are we are we are canceling every other element no other elements exist yeah, they're not only allowed. these if ones. you have any other elements in your body take it out <laughs> yeah you don't you don't want those phosphorus you don't need it mm-hmm -mm. Calcium? Who needs bones? Not us. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.